Welcome to the Daily Current Affairs by Civic Center IAS, where we try to discuss the important articles from the Hindu, the Indian Express, and the PIB from the UPSC CSC prelims perspective. Displayed are the list of articles which we are going to discuss in today's video. The first article of the day is related to Dongria Khond community, which is a particularly vulnerable tribal group. In this context, we'll talk about the Dongria Khond community. See, they are a particularly vulnerable tribal group. Know that they are located in the Niamgiri Hills in the state of Odisha in India. Furthermore, they sustain themselves from the resources of the Niamgiri forests, practicing horticulture and shifting cultivation. Notably, Niamgiri is a hill range which falls under the Rayagada and Kalahandi district in the southwest Odisha of India. Significantly, its highest point in the, is the mountain known as Niamgiri or Niam Dongar. Then, their language is Kui language. Interestingly, the Kui language does not have a script, but it is spoken among the people of the Kond community. Significantly, they worship Niam Raja, who was the god of the Niamgiri forest. Remember that Odisha has the largest population of the PVTGs in India, followed by the state of Madhya Pradesh. Some of the other PVTGs of Odisha are Birhor, Didai, Dungaria Khanda, Hilkaharia, Juang, Kutia Khond, Loda, Mankirdia, Saura, and others. The next article of the day says that the growth in India's gross goods and services tax collections slowed on marginally to 10% in August from 10.3% in July with revenues of nearly 1.75 lakh crore rupees. However, the rise in net receipts slumped to 6.5%, which is the second weakest in this financial year from 14.4% in the previous month. In this context, let us talk about goods and services tax, in short, called the GST. See the 101st Constitutional Amendment Act introduced the GST in 2017. Know that the goods and services tax is a form of indirect tax which is levied on most of the goods and services sold in India for domestic consumption. Significantly, GST is a unified tax system that replaced multiple indirect taxes levied by both the central governments and the state government. Further, GST is essentially a consumption tax and is levied at the final consumption point. Notably, the principle used in GST taxation is destination principle. Also, it is levied on the value addition and provides set-offs. So, as a result, it avoids the cascading effect or the tax on tax, which increases the tax burden on the end consumer. Furthermore, under the Indian GST, goods and services are categorized into different tax labs, including 5%, 12%, 18%, and 28%. Know that GST was launched with the motto One Nation, One Market, One Tax. Then, some of the prominent examples of indirect taxes in India include excise duty, customs duty, sales tax, service tax, toll tax, stamp duty, etc. The next article says that the Enforcement Directorate has identified several properties of Jaskreet Singh who has a Dubai based alleged international drug trafficker. He also sought by enforcement agencies in the United States. Further, he is alleged to have links with the banned terror outfit Khalistan Liberation Force. In this context, let us talk about the relevant aspects from the article. See, the Directorate of Enforcement or the ED is a multidisciplinary organization mandated with the investigation of economic crimes and violations of foreign exchange laws. Interestingly, the origin of this directorate go back to 1st May of 1956 when an enforcement unit was formed in the Department of Economic Affairs for handling exchange control laws violations under the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act of 1947. Later in the year 1957, this unit was renamed as Enforcement Directorate. Know that the Department of Revenue of the Ministry of Finance is the nodal ministry for it. Notably, the headquarters of this Enforcement Directorate is in New Delhi. Now, the statutory functions of the Directorate include enforcement of the following acts, which are The first one is the Prevention of Money Laundering Act of 2002. See, the ED has been given the responsibility to enforce the provisions of the PMLA by conducting special investigation to trace the assets derived from proceeds of the crime, to provisionally attach the property, and to ensure uh, pro prosecution of the offenders uh, and uh, confiscation of the property by the special courts. Secondly, the Foreign Exchange Management Act of 1999. 
Under this, ED has been given the responsibility to conduct investigation into suspected contraventions of the foreign exchange laws and regulations to adjudicate and impose penalties on those adjudicated to have contravened the law. The third one is the Fugitive Economic Offenders Act of 2018. See, it is a law whereby the directorate is mandated to attach the properties of the fugitive economic offenders who have escaped from India warranting arrest and provide for confiscation of their properties to the central government. Know that both the FEMA and the PMLA apply to the whole of India. So the ED can take action against any person on which this act applies. Further, the cases under the FEMA may lie in civil courts where the PMLA cases will lie in criminal courts. Notably, ED cannot take an action suo moto. So, one has to complain to any other agency or police first and then ED will investigate the matter and will identify the accused. The next article says that India's crude oil imports from Russia, which is New Delhi's largest source market for oil, has pulled off sequentially in August from July's near record levels as oil demand evidently softened in the run-up to the refinery maintenance season, according to the ship tracking data and industry watchers. Relatively, lower availability of Russian oil for the export market was also a likely factor. In this context, let us talk about the relevant aspects about it. See, India currently is the third largest consumer of crude oil behind the US and China. Significantly, Russia is currently India's largest supplier of oil. Further, the Ural's crude oil grade of Russia has become a cornerstone of uh, India's energy diversification efforts. Know that Iraq is the second largest source of crude oil supplier to India. Notably, India's efforts to diversify oil procurement channels uh, aims to mitigate geopolitical risks and ensure a stable energy supply. Then, Saudi Arabia is India's third largest oil supplier. Lastly, Abu Dhabi is India's fourth largest supplier of crude oil. The next article says that more than 60% of Indians and more than half of all Pakistanis surveyed believe that two countries cannot have friendly relations in this decade, says a new study by the Center for Policy Research, VOTA. Know that it looks at the attitudes of Indians, Pakistanis and Bangladeshis on a number of political, economic and foreign policy issues. In this context, let us talk about the relevant aspects of the article. See, India and Pakistan are the two neighboring countries in South, East, South Asia. Further, the multilateral forums between India and Pakistan are further the multilateral forums between India and Pakistan are uh, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation SARC, Shanghai Cooperation Organization SEO, and United Nations UN. Know that India shares its land boundaries with seven countries, which are Pakistan and Afghanistan in the northwest, China, Nepal and Bhutan in the north, and uh, Myanmar and Bangladesh in the east. Additionally, towards the south, India has uh, two neighboring island countries, uh, which are Sri Lanka and Maldives. Here is the table showing the India's neighbors and the states uh, that share border with them. The next article says that SNT Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh formally released a new bio E3 policy. Further, he hailed India as a global torchbearer of the next industrial revolution, thanking Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi for his support. In this context, let us discuss various aspects related to the policy. See the Bio E3 policy, which stands for Biotechnology for Economy, Environment and Employment Policy for fostering high-performance biomanufacturing, is a forward-looking initiative designed to bolster innovation, research, and entrepreneurship in the field of biotechnology in India. Now, if we look at the objectives of the mission, see the bio e policy is intended to foster a sustainable and circular economy through the industrialization biology. Further, it aims to advance cutting-edge innovations in biotechnology, contributing to the creation of a high-performance biomanufacturing ecosystem in India. Notably, the policy aligns with the global and national priorities promoting a future that is responsible to critical societal and environmental challenges. Now, if we look, discuss the key features of the bio e 3 policy, firstly, the policy focuses on supporting uh, research and development and entrepreneurship across various thematic sectors. Further, it aims to accelerate the technology development and commercialization 
by establishing bio manufacturing and bio ai hubs and bio foundry secondly the scheme prioritizes regenerative bio economy models that contribute to green growth also it supports the government initiatives like the net zero carbon economy and lifestyle for environment additionally it aims to promote a circular bio economy which emphasizes sustainable and circular practices under the screen thirdly it facilitates the expansion of india's skilled workforce further it anticipates a surge in job creation particularly in the biotechnology and related sectors now what are the strategic or thematic sectors under the scheme see the policy will focus on several strategic sectors to address the national priorities which are firstly high value bio based chemicals polymers and enzymes then smart proteins and functional fluid uh, foods thirdly precision biotherapeutics next climate resilient agriculture also carbon capture and the uh, utilization and lastly marine and space research the last article of the day says that the days after the center unveiled its bio e3 policy to boost a biotechnology centric manufacturing in india the department of biotechnology is contemplating setting up uh, enzyme manufacturing facilities to bolster ethanol production according to the scientists and officials with the department in this context let us talk about ethanol in general and then about 2g ethanol see ethanol which is also known as ethyl alcohol is a biofuel produced from various sources such as sugarcane corn rice wheat and biomass so the production process involves the fermentation of sugars by yeast or via petrochemical processes such as ethylene hydration significantly ethanol is 99.9% pure alcohol that can be blended with petrol to create a cleaner fuel alternative notably it can be blended with petrol in various proportions such as e10 which constitutes 10% ethanol and 90% petrol and e20 which constitutes to 20% ethanol and 80% petrol further the indian government has implemented the ethanol blending program to promote the use of ethanol as a renewable fuel notably this program aims to blend ethanol with petrol to reduce the country's dependence on imported crude oil cut carbon emissions and boost farmers income also ethanol blends help reduce greenhouse gas emissions and air pollutants contributing to cleaner air and mitigating the climate change if we look at some of the other initiatives to promote ethanol blending in india they are national policy on biofuels of 2018 e100 pilot project pradhan mantri jeevan yojana of 2019 and repurpose uh, used cooking oil in short called the ruco then moving on to talk about uh, 2g ethanol see to meet the blending targets the government is focusing on second generation ethanol produced from surplus biomass uh, agriculture waste and industrial waste uh, using advanced biofuel technology so 2g or the second generation bioethanol is ethanol that is produced uh, from rice straw as supposed the conventional method of sourcing it from the molasses further the pradhan mantri jeevan yojana which was launched in the year 2019 provides a financial assistance for 2g bioethanol projects significantly the first 2g ethanol project was set up by the indian oil corporation limited in panipat of haryana additionally more projects by bpcl hpcl and nrl are nearing completion in odisha punjab and assam so the government's commitment to promoting advanced biofuels through the pradhan mantri jeevan yojana reflects its dedication to a sustainable and self reliant energy sector so in this video we have discussed seven articles total from the hindu to indian express and the piv we'll be back again with another video tomorrow thank you